Have you ever wondered where the chicken you eat comes from? The obvious answer is from eggs, but not just any eggs. These eggs are different than the ones you buy in the store because they come from a different type of chicken. So where do these eggs come from? There is a little known segment of the poultry industry that raises the parents of chickens we eat, known as broiler breeders. The name is fairly self-explanatory. The chickens are bred to produce broilers, the term for chickens grown for chicken meat products. The product from broiler breeder operations is fertile eggs. Commercial hatcheries receive the eggs which are then incubated and hatched to produce broiler chicks. These broiler chicks are raised on commercial broiler farms for the meat market. Let's take a closer look at the details. In order to meet consumer demand for a steady supply of chicken meat products, chickens have been carefully bred and selected for improved feed efficiency, growth rate, and breast yield. Only the best of the best are used as parents of future generations of chickens, because one breeding pair can affect approximately 40,000 broilers. Broilers have four grandparents, shown here as A, B, C, and D. Lines A and B are crossed to make an AB male broiler breeder. Lines C and D are crossed to make a CD female broiler breeder. The ABCD offspring are broilers. This breeding system ensures that broilers have all the necessary qualities to produce nutritious, safe, and top quality meat. The Canadian poultry industry is committed to producing chicken products that meet the highest standards for food safety and quality through biosecurity measures. In order to maintain a healthy flock, diseases must be prevented from entering the barn from an outside source. Did you know that chicken barns have a dress code? A change of boots and clothing are necessary. Boot dips are also used to sterilize footwear, and you need to wash your hands before entering. These farms maintain biosecurity by controlling outside traffic on the farm and ensuring only authorized people enter the barns. Another thing farmers do to ensure the health of the flock is practice the concept of all in and all out. An entire flock will come into the barn at the same time and the flock will be depopulated or be taken out of the barn at the same time. This way, the barn can be cleaned and disinfected between flocks. Broiler breeders arrive on the farm as day-old chicks. The chicks are usually delivered by trucks and sometimes by plane since they come from breeding farms outside of the country. What happens until these chicks are old enough to start laying eggs? There are two stages in a broiler breeder's life, rearing and breeding. Producers have separate barns called pullet barns, where the chicks are reared. Pullet is the technical term for a young female chicken before she starts to lay. For the first couple of days after the chicks arrive, they are provided with high light intensity and 23 hours of light per day to encourage eating and drinking. Since the desired product is fertile eggs, most of the chickens on broiler breeder farms are hens. At the hatchery, chicks are sorted and counted according to sex. Now for a quick chicken anatomy lesson. In birds, the reproductive and digestive tract share a common exit, called the cloaca or vent. The chick's cloaca is everted and examined to determine its sex. Some chicks can be sexed by an easier method, called feather sexing, if the genetics of the strain is designed to allow this. In some strains, females grow their large wing feathers faster than the male chicks do. Once the chicks are separated and counted, approximately one male for every ten females are sent to the breeder farm. Generally, males are raised separately from the females, as they have different body weight targets, which are met by feeding different amounts. They are typically raised separately until 22 weeks of age. After those first few days, light intensity is reduced to limit bird activity. Breeder chicks are typically fed as much food as they want for the first three to four weeks, or until they have reached a particular target body weight. Their diet consists of cereal grains, a protein source, and supplemented vitamins and minerals. Breeder diets are less nutrient dense than broiler diets since breeders are raised on very slow growth rates. This rate does not make the growth rate potential of broilers. Fresh clean water is provided in nipple drinker systems. Proper ventilation is crucial to maintaining a healthy, 
productive flock by providing clean air and keeping the litter dry. It is important to remove dust and control carbon dioxide and ammonia levels. Light traps are used to control the interior light environment by blocking any outside light. While they are young, birds are exposed to short days, approximately 8 hours in length. The young birds are called chicks until their down starts to be replaced by feathers. Flock uniformity is important throughout the production cycle. It is maintained by providing enough space for all the birds to eat at one time, so there is no competition at the feeders. Uniformity is desirable because this impacts how the hens begin to produce eggs. Hens are fed early in the morning after the lights come on. One management tool sometimes used to optimize the distribution of feed and uniformity is to provide the birds with two times the normal allocation on alternate days. Skip a day feeding allows the birds to fill up their digestive tracts at each feeding and maximize their intake. Most producers feed once per day using automatic feeding systems. Birds have to be weighed often to know how much to feed them and to monitor flock uniformity. Weighing can be done manually or automatically. Ideally, at least 50 birds should be weighed at a time to give accurate data of the entire flock. Automatic scales weigh the birds that jump on and record the weight remotely. These scales are good tools for observing small changes in growth among the flock. Specific amounts of feed are provided to ensure the birds are maintaining a certain growth rate. Because these birds are bred for rapid growth, it is necessary to limit their feed intake so they don't become obese and unhealthy. Their feed is in a mass form so that it is palatable to the birds, encouraging them to eat their allotted amount of feed.